at the beginning, before we start, I do have one question to ask you, Pete, which is this. Obviously, spoiler, there is no heretics at the season finals. So we will do a discussion about some of your thoughts on the team and how the year went and all that jazz. But I will just say at the beginning, there is no universe in which, while Peter is the coach now, I can actually ask him, like, so what happened with that CL guy? Why is he not there anymore? Like, that's not going to be a conversation at this point in time. Like, that is just something in the background that we will ignore and go, Hey, keep, shut the fuck up there, elephant. We're trying to have a convo here about the team at Reddit. So we're not going to get into that. There's no drama needed on this. Well, there'll be loads of drama, but it'll be out the other teams, not about us. So, Peter, what are your initial... Let's just get it out of the way. What do you think about the way the Heretics year went overall? Like, to me, I actually noticed the way you've messaged is very different from a lot of other orgs. Like, you've kind of messaged as well, actually, the kind of level you got to is maybe even, like, above expectations for the first year. And you kind of have, like, isn't it like you have a two-year plan or something where making Worlds would be next year's main goal, right? Yeah, I mean, when we came in, it was a two-year plan, but obviously we're ex incredibly disappointed uh, to not be going further than we are. Um, I'm sure we'll have a lot more in-depth discussion about heretics but uh you know uh maybe coming in our plan was to have a two-year plan but at the point where you sign yankos you're not having a two-year plan anymore right like right you know sure. uh, in the same i mean it's it's not it's not even about uh cost it's about you know it's disrespectful to a to a legend of the game to not put a roster around him that can compete um and obviously yankos was the last person that we put into our roster you know he was literally the last person we signed um and, you know, we made changes appropriately and the changes didn't have a big impact for us to compete. Um, but I felt basically, um, you know, we had a shift of plan in the middle of the year. Um, and I'm, I mean, I'm sure lots of people have heard the rumors. I mean, Bwipo went on a show and basically talked about a lot of the things that were happening in the last off season. Um, and yeah, uh, basically what I would say is that uh i think we kind of underperformed uh what uh what i would have hoped for uh coming into coming into summer split but uh yeah it's just generally a very disappointing year you can't be happy with a year where you came eighth ninth and fourth like that's that's not a good year right so, so yeah that's all i put on that okay right here's the thing dom we already did the full like Soviet gulag interrogation of CL about mm -hmm. maybe. So I feel like we don't have to. We don't we have, have to put that on Peter. We don't well. have to do that again. Yeah, we also did it with as well. We've already. We don't. We're not going to do that again, guys. We've, spoiler: You can go look at the classics. They're all there in the can. You know, like <laughs> go, go check them out. There's, there's some great work there. Who did better defense? You'll have to decide that yourselves. But they're obviously you must have some questions about her ex, right, Don? What do you want to know about? I mean, it, it feels weird because all the questions that I've had i feel like i've already asked you know like the, the evie signing the ruby signing you know like getting some of those like veteran players and, and like the response originally was that um last time you're on the show peter the response was that you know you do have rookie players that you were bringing up which at the time it was like jack and and mersa but then like ruby was replaced with, with video and then jack was re was replaced with uh flocking so i guess my main question would be when did the mentality change into like a more get results now from a develop like the young players have some veterans and like develop you know jack into a, a player that could be like really good for example next year that i, I, I think, think that's you're a good thing because oh, oh no, it's all good it's just a bit yeah. it, I think it, camera's a bit like but don't worry keep going your voice is coming through clear it's all good so i could talk about that i think it also fits a little bit into the heavy stuff as well so i think it, it maybe is a bit useful on that um basically um i will say um, about Ruby and Jack, and I don't think either of those guys are bad players. I think Ruby was kind of yeah. doomed from the start. I, I think Ruby's a bad player, but you know. Okay, that's, okay, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Um, but <laughs> what I will say about Ruby is the best way I can describe Ruby is um, we had a game where Ruby was on Rise, and uh, it was against uh, Evie was on Trindamir, and we were like 5k gold up at 18 minutes. And he was holding the game perfectly, everything was going well, he was roaming with his Rise. I didn't agree with every play he did with his Rise. But, you know, he's, he's really talkative. And then eight into the game, it's in, I remember the exact game. It was in spring. It was against uh, Koi. Uh, he dies for no reason in a bush trying to be really, really aggressive. And that's fine. At the point where he dies, he doesn't talk for the rest of the game. He just literally doesn't say a word for the rest of the game. And there's a similar situation in the Mad Lions, uh, in the Mad Lions series, uh, the, the playoff against Mad Lions to get into groups. He's on Tilia. Mm -hmm. He messes up a top. 
and then he goes from being super talkative, really, really being decisive what he wants, and then he just doesn't talk for the rest of the game. Um, and okay. lose to, Korean to me. <laughs> I, 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 Impact was never like that. Impact talked more when he was. Uh, when yeah, he was Im- Impact is <laughs> is different. He's he's a different beast. Um, but essentially, so so this to me, this was different to what he was doing on Unicorns of Love. It was so it was a bit of a surprise um, when we saw. Uh, and the, the one thing I would say about Jack is, look, I think Jack is one of the top ten mechanical. And I don't mean that as a you know meme. He's like number ten. No, I think he's one of the ten best. You know, probably even one of the seven or six or seven best uh, right now as a rookie. Uh, mechanical AD carries in Europe, but as and I say this because he's our player, and you know he's about to play a tournament in Iberia Cup, and this is the thing which will determine whether Jack can be a future star of the LEC or not. If he is not vocal at all about his wife. Which means right. that whenever your team <clears throat> plays away from him, he oh he he just gets he, he gets dove and he gets really, really far behind. And this is one of the reasons why when he's on Draven, when he's on Lucian, when he's on Callista, the game looks really easy. He had like a game on Draven, right. I think against Excel, where we won the game in like mm-hmm. twenty minutes, and that was him literally nonstop talking all the time. But uh the situation with Jack uh, is that either it's a lack of knowledge or it's a lack of confidence, but this is the thing that is stopping him being like a top tier player. And if you look at, if you look at heretics in the ERLs in playoffs, when they lost to Finnetwork network Koi, uh, the Spanish Koi team, um, the enemy team just target him every single time we go to Herald, they just target him on bot lane. And I know that he's not communicating about his wave to me. It was never a mechanical issue that was holding him back. It was a voice comm issue. And this is why, just couldn't develop in the environment we had. And if you actually look at Mercer, you look at Evi, why they put better in summer split, it's not because it's not because it's because they they now have a mid laner who's really, really vocal. He Vincent v- VTO wants everyone mid whenever they can possibly be. And Flacken never stops talking. So it's much easier to to play in that kind of environment. And to be clear, I think Jack will develop that. But I mean look at Iberia Cup, which will happen in two months from now. And if if things are different, then then you'll see a, a very much improved Jack. But you know, you, you've seen we've seen Jack. His team fighting is insane. He really knows what to do uh, in kind of the mid to late game. But he gets himself really really far down every single game, and it's purely a communication issue. Um, and we weren't able to fix that. And trust me, lots and lots of things were tried. Like we tried we tried playing against easier teams, you know, like lower teams. We scrimmed Czech teams, we scrimmed Italian teams, you know, just to to try to build build the framework up from scratch. But for whatever reason, uh, it just never went through on stage, and he, he just needs more practice in that area, and he'll develop, and I'm sure he'll be really really great uh, later on uh, when he when it finally clicks. So I, I think I think those were the, those were the real reasons behind the two tra- changes. Um, and yeah, I mean that's all I kind of had to say about that. When you have again. When you have Yankos in your team, you can't afford to just sit around and wait for these things to click, right? Like, you know, I, I believe League of Legends players will play way into their 30s, okay, right? At, at some point in the future. But, like, I can't just have Yankos on my team sitting around waiting. And to be clear, Yankos never caused any problems behind the scenes. You know, he's like the perfect teammate. He's the he, he's like a really, really great in-game leader. But at the same point, you can feel, you can feel it sometimes. And um, I think that that is, uh, I think that was our responsibility as an organ, my responsibility as a coach, not to continue a project like that. I think that's what I would say. Okay. Interesting answers there. Basically, if people that were, can't want to make it concise, it wasn't just gameplay related things. It was things like who has a voice in the team and how does that affect the style of play, etc. Which, by the way, I do think is always the underrated part. And it's not that like me and Dom are idiots. It's not we aren't in the team, so we can't know these dynamics, etc. So we we are sometimes just judging on who plays a better Siver in a certain matchup or why didn't this person who carried the team fight get to stay in the team? Because obviously, I would say actually, I thought Jack Spectre looked like one of, uh, with Yankos was the best player in the team from the outside but I can understand in this case why that might make the game more limited if he's not speaking very much I'll I'll segue this to the obvious other name which is it's already enough that you got Yankos out of nowhere that's like a gift from the gods just being handed a player like that available at the point where Heretics were because if people don't know he could and maybe should have been in some of the much bigger name teams for much more money but then the other one obviously was when mid-season you made the switch to pick up Vetio or Vetio however you want to pronounce it 
don't know if you're French or not. Now, here's what's funny, Peter. Everyone now is going to all claim, because I know what people are like. No, no, I always thought he was good. I thought he was just having a bad time in ex. No, no. Everyone was down on this guy, mate. As people were telling me stuff like, like that it meant all the misfits period was a fraud. And, you know, he was like, I don't know, carried by the jungler or it was just the way he was set. Or it was like people were actually telling me, you know, ironically, it's just because Yumi was in the game that he did all those carry games. Like, so. A lot of other people actually completely backed out and retconned history on VTO. Obviously, you took the gambler, you brought him in, and I would say it paid off pretty well. Like He looked like a much better player immediately. It seems like actually he brought something interesting to the dynamic, right, Peter? Because a lot of people speculated in XL, right? Is it that no one in this team speaks or does no one know what they want or does everyone sit back? Like, what, what would you say it's been like to work with VTO? What, what's your sense of what you have to do to, to make him be this a really good mid laner as opposed to the fairly humdrum one he was in XL? Vito is he's is very very conflict driven he is he he likes, likes it, right? the, okay. he loves it and like i would say yankos yankos likes it too and flacken 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 could go both ways but flacken kind of likes it too like they're really really direct and there are things that i've heard uh say about each other which uh i will not repeat here but basically they're willing to be really really frank and they're willing to be really really direct right and that doesn't work on every single team you know there's some teams where you need kind of a uh everyone needs to be best friends right and i'm not like obviously flackard and yankos are really really close friends but on this heretics nobody needs to be friends right like as long as we come in we we all work hard we all know we're going towards the same goals and we go and you know like we go and hang out afterwards right like it doesn't matter like the fact that they are they were friends is something that they developed over the course of the split but nobody came in like that like that our first scrims at the start were like our reviews were why are you doing this why are you doing this like going really really hard and basically you know the excel roster that they had you know Zerxe, patrick uh i don't well odo is quite it, like likes his discussion but but patrick and Zerxe are definitely more the conflict averse type of players so i can see how you know when you have odo and vto and you have patrick and Zerxe, i can see how it would have been different on XL. That's what I would say. But on Heretics, you know, they, these are exactly the type of guys that I love to work with. You know, people like Inspired, people like Impact. You know, don't I don't I I dislike it when a player automatically assumes that the coach is always right, or you know, they, they have their opinion, they're going to go hard on their opinion, and you just have to prove you have to justify your po your point of view. And I think that's that's kind of why Heretics worked because a lot of the everyone on the team understood this and they were willing to go hard, right? And I think I think that was a good thing. Okay. I've got one last question that will actually jump into the season finals and all the other teams. The last question goes like this. I'm actually very interested to know what stylistically you were trying to do with Heretics in this last split, the summer split, Peter, because one thing I've noticed about your teams is it's in line with the way you explained the different personalities and the, the balance of like types of player in your team. You didn't just say whether someone's good or bad. I've noticed in your teams, they always have like an identity and a playing style that comes from the personnel. So if people don't know, look, obviously there was a negative later consequence to this, but we'll just, you, we'll stick to the example for now if people ever saw when danny was in evil geniuses the difference between the first split he was in like summer or whatever it was 2021 and later when they had the george all and it was very different the way he was used in the team and the way he was like set up to be a carry or not a carry or what whether he was hidden on the map or you i thought it was very interesting the way you like decided which way to go depending on the personnel of the team so with this team people might remember early on when this herex team was getting these wins you had all these like quite interesting teleport players that the team keep making like what was the vision behind so what, what were you seeing in the game because it seemed like you were the only team making these players mate uh, we played through our most vocal members um i'll be honest like we had a different strategy in the best of ones to the best of threes and best of fives uh but basically flackard was incredibly vocal um and you know th there was the interesting stat that was on the broadcast i think dom i saw it on your twitter actually because i was watching the game uh, i was obviously backstage but where they had the stat where evie was 10th in forward percentage, 10th in goal differential, yep. and third in jungle proximity. Um, yeah. <laughs> Which is like the most damning stat line possible. Because if you think about what that means, that means that he is like sure. getting played around permanently. Like he's one of the most played around players. And then he's also just permanently behind as well. But yes. So, so yeah. So actually, uh, I, I can actually kind of explain that. So I was kind of, so I don't have access to the 14 uh, minutes, but at Oracle's Elixir releases the stats at 10 minutes, right? Okay. And there is a mm -hmm. massive gap between um eighth and tenth eighth to tenth it's three tiers okay there's one and two which are finn and uh finn and photon then three seven who are all like almost the same stats and then eight nine and ten are adam broken blade and evie right and it's about how their teams use their top laners um so 
doing basically in the early game is Jankos would go top. He would get Evi an early game lead. Uh, we would then, uh, at 10 minutes, always look to TP towards bot. Uh, and that's where the jungle proximity is coming from, right? He's ganking top early. He's getting him a lead. Uh, we use Herald if we choose to play for Herald. So that's more jungle proximity. And basically, Evi's job is not is never to win his lane. Whenever he has an advantage, his his job is to go into the jungle, track the enemy jungle, so that when we see, because you know how jungle camps respawn, right? So if we see enemy jungle, uh, at eight minutes on top side, we know that in two minutes he's going to be back top side again, right? So we're just going to TP bot every single time, and we're already looking to set up the wave and do that. And that's what we did in that was kind of our set play in regular season. It worked for a lot of games. It also explains why his goal difference is so is so low because he's always looking for those kind of plays. Um, obviously, he had a few bad games. He, his his game against Excel was really poor. Like Odo really kind of got him in that game. Um, but but every but. Every game where top was getting ahead, we were using that to play into bot. It's like Fnatic in 2020. Into playoffs, we switched our strategy a bit because we knew in order to go to Worlds, we had to play against BDS and we had to play against Fnatic. Uh, and both of those teams are teams that want to play mid into bot. Um, so the way that we were playing there was to neutralize bot lane um, and to then use support room into mid. And, you know, the meta was AD mids, you know, like uh, Kai'Sa, um, Tristana, Jace. Uh, and that's why we were playing all those AP champions bot lane. It was so that we could neutralize bot, play into mid, uh, and then uh, get Vincent ahead. Um, we kind of shied away from that in the second Fnatic series, and actually I, I'm kind of disappointed that we did that, to be honest. Uh, but how scrims were going and how the team felt, uh, we kind of we kind of switched, switched up our style to just go more standard, you know, playing Ari into Jason, things like this, instead of Tristana or Lucian. Um, so it's kind of my regret of the season. Because if you look at Noah, the champions that Noah is really, really good on, things like Aphelios, he's really good on Aphelios, he's really good on Zaya. Those are champions where if you're playing Ziggs, if you're playing Seraphine, those champions are really, really good into those types right. of champions, right? So that's what we were trying to do, but we didn't we didn't follow through. And um, that one of my that's my big regret from this year, if I had to say so. Let's do it. Let's just jump in the other team, Storm. It's okay. Yeah, I mean, one thing I would want to say on that, though, before we move on, um, is... That I feel like it's pretty convenient because Evie was also like not a strong laner in the first two splits. And then TP was changed to be like, a, you know, a 10 minute summoner spell where now you could influence bot as opposed to like a 14 minute post lane phase, post plating um, summoner spell. So I feel like it is it is pretty convenient that it's like, oh, well, our strategy was just for Evie to TP bot. It's like, well, that was impossible in the first like two splits. And there was no knowledge that it would actually like become a viable strategy or that like the game would change in that fundamental way. Firstly, Evie's laning stats weren't bad in winter, right? Like, I mean, he he got Cassante every game. Sure, yeah, but his, he, as soon as people yeah, started banning uh, Cassante, they got yeah, bad. Sure, uh, 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 sure, but I mean, but in spring, why were his stats bad in spring? It's because basically we wanted to play. We had this issue in our team where if we didn't find a way to cover bot lane, any team would just play through bot, right? Um, and so we played a lot of strategies where Evie was on something like he was on a Scion or he was on a Gragas and he, he can't play those champions very, very well, right? Like he's never been those, that type of a player. And we, you, we use that to kind of bridge. So we would just say top lane, go sit on an island. And we're just going to go and play into bot. Uh, and that was our strategy. That was our strategy in spring. Uh, now obviously the TP, the TP timers made a huge difference, right? But the big difference would have been. Flacken would have come in. He would have had. He he has really really good comms, and then we could have put Flacken more on weak side and played into into top more. If we if if that had been the meta, if the TP if playing into top had become more important, that's how we would have gone and played. So so I think it's it's a mixture of the rest of the other team. But just remember that we played the first two splits, Yankos being the baller and doing ninety percent of our comms. And uh, it's really hard if you're somebody that doesn't speak English as a first language to be able to come and play strong side like this when, when you're not receiving any information. Okay, and I think I think that's that's what I would say on Evi, um, and I would say that's one of the reasons why it looked really really hard for Evi. Um, and I just want to be really really clear on this. I think that that is something that maybe I should have foreseen more as a rookie with with like Ruby and Jack coming into the team. I should have foreseen it more. But when you look at their comms on Unicorns of Love or Heretics, uh, Heretics LVP, like you look at Jack's comms last year, you look at uh, uh, you look at Ruby's comms on on Unicorns of Love. When their jungler or their top laner isn't playing for them properly, they're like going hard on their jungler. Like when Blue Rizer like doesn't play for bot lane properly, uh, last split is last last year. Sorry, Jack is going like you know I need you now, right? Like and that just didn't happen, right? So so I would say I would say that. 
I would say that this is that this is kind of an issue. It's a mistake that we as a coaching staff made. It's a mistake that uh, maybe, you know, we could have handled the team better. Maybe we could have um, managed how they do with comms better. Maybe we could have had better practice. Maybe we could have had, you know, there's tens of different things that we could have done. But this is, this is the reality of, of the situation. And, you know, when Evie finally was in a team where he, he other people were coming and he, he had comfort within the team, he actually played better. He played better in the groups good in our series against Fnatic he wasn't insane he was good and he had a good when we he had simple set plays to go for it was shot calling was micro was you can say micromanaging but was you know we had things that we practiced in scrims he was able to execute them right i mean that that's all i say that's all i say on that situation right uh, like it, we would have done something different if tp's hadn't changed Thing is, Dom, I don't really care about the Evie topic, mate. The reason why I say that is, one, we've milked all the comedy from it. And so basically, <laughs> it's not like it's not like he himself and his coach staff have pretended he's really good, Dom. This isn't like the bullshit when like people actually unironically in his first split were trying to gaslight us that like Adam was already better than Wonder and like a complete top lane. Like that is egregious. That does deserve like infinite fucking like inquisitions and trials and all that. In this case, like <laughs> He can't change the lineup. So in my opinion, look, if Dom, if Peter isn't here, I mean, he's here, but I'll say it anyway. I would obviously just say fire Revy and get a different player. I don't really give a fuck about that one. It's pretty open and shut for me. But Peter has to just work with the yeah. way he's got to me. He's just, just work. And quite frankly, he's working miracles, mate. So, you know, I mean, what, what at this point in time, like Peter needs to spend all his time working on actual strategy for heretics. He can't put like 10 hours a day into like creative strategies for explaining why Evie gets to sit on the team. <laughs> There's no time for that, mate. He's got a second all full-time job. So I think we'll just move on now. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content, well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.